So today actually kicked off the Copenhagen Major. I'm recording this video on March 17th of 2024. Um, we had the first ever CS2 Major starting off today. A lot of great games, a lot of excitement, getting a lot of people buzzing. The viewership has been really crazy so far. The social media fanfare and everything. It's been a weird Major so far. Obviously, the Major has started and we still don't have the stickers or the capsules or anything like that. But obviously, most of the sticker craziness starts after the sticker sale after the Major ends anyway. Um, but in this video today, we're going to be talking about a couple of different ways that you can or could potentially uh, make money during or just kind of involving the Copenhagen Major. These are all ideas and, and things that I saw happen during Paris, some things that I did during Paris, some things that I heard other people do um, that I wanted to bring up again because, you know, the Copenhagen Major is pretty similar to the Paris Major in a lot of ways, not a lot of new changes, not a lot of new updates. Uh, and there are definitely some ways um, for money to be made, or like I said, maybe potentially to be made that we're going to be going over in this video today. Of course, as always, let me mention real quick, if you are looking to sell any of your CS2 items or maybe even your entire inventory, you should definitely hit me up over on Twitter. I'm buying almost anything and everything for between 85 and 90% buff. We can help you get an instant, safe, efficient, uh, easy, you know, cash out into cash or crypto or whatever whatever other payment method you are looking for. Um, it makes it easy for you if you need IRL money quick or if you're looking to change up your inventory or buy some new investments or whatever. Uh, or also, and also, you know, by doing this, you're helping support me, my channel and my content, which I would appreciate a ton. Um, with that being said, let's get right into this. So, the first thing that I want to talk about, uh, which again, this you can't even do just yet, um, but this does involve stickers during the major. Um, there is a way, obviously, to profit by trying to flip stickers during the actual major itself. Now, this idea in and of itself doesn't make a whole lot of sense because um, obviously, uh, sticker prices, they're going to be very volatile, just kind of randomly, even if it's not based off teams winning or losing. But weirdly enough, during the major, as teams start to win or go on win streaks, or overperform or surprise people, their sticker prices will start to move up and down. And we saw this with a couple of different teams um, during the Paris Major. You really saw this with all teams. I remember specifically like Into the Breach, I think they kind of surprised some people and, and their kind of stickers rose up at certain times during the Major. Obviously, we saw um, not as Vincere. They made it to the finals of the Major. And you can see here um, that like uh, during different time periods, their uh, sticker would like bump up. It went from you know $7 to $10. And then um, down here, it went from $5 up to $6.30 as they like made it to the finals and played in the finals and stuff like that. Um, but obviously over the course of the major sticker prices should generally be going down because inventory and supply is going to be going up. Um, but for whatever reason, people really like when teams start playing well and they want to rush in and they want to buy their stickers and make crafts and do all this stuff, or maybe just speculate and try and gamble and make money off of them. Now, obviously this strategy is very risky because, um, everyone's going to be trying to, or not everyone, but a lot of people are going to be trying to do this as the teams win. And as people start to see that you can potentially make some money off this. Um, one of the crazier ones was uh, Gamer Legion. You know, they had a unique uh, borderless pair of sticker that a lot of people liked. It looked good. And this team kind of surprised some people. They ended up making it all the way to the finals. And you can see here at some points, this sticker was as low as $4. But then as they made it to the finals, which was on May 21st, you can see here by the time May 21st came around, the sticker was up to $17. Now, obviously this wasn't only because of of, um, their play in the major, but it had something to do with it. That's what got some of the hype uh, and, and, and kind of craziness involved with them. So you can see here, if you do find a kind of under the radar team with a good looking sticker that people also like, you can go on some crazy runs. There's definitely some people who made almost a 4x return uh, in like a week or something on Gamer Legion stickers as Gamer Legion uh, went on this crazy run all the way to the finals. So there was definitely multiple variables going on for Gamer Legion there, but you can see um, that certain teams, by performing well during the actual major, their sticker can go up and you can make money. Again, this is a little bit gambly. It's a little bit speculative. It is very, very volatile. I'm not like recommending it, but I'm just saying it is something that people will do. It is something that you could potentially do. And if you are somebody who knows a lot about the esports scene or you know thinks you know which teams are going to do well or perform or whatever, and you're feeling a little risky, hey, this might be something you're able to do. Now, uh, the other option you have is uh, viewer passes. Now, again, I don't know if this this is necessarily going to be that great. Um, and you can see here the Paris viewer pass over the course of all time has not done very well. The Paris viewer pass plus three souvenir tokens started out being listed for $18. This thing is now down to $10. But as we know, most things with Paris were over invested. And with all of these strategies, as more and more people start to do them, they're going to become less and less profitable and they're going to be less and less good. Now, previously, 
all viewer passes had done really well. We can even just go back to Antwerp and see that the Antwerp viewer pass plus three souvenir tokens, same type of deal, started out at $18. This thing peaked all the way up at almost, what, $90 here? Is this $93? And even today, this thing is up to $47. So, you know, you've had a little bit more than um, a two extra turn, like a 2.5 extra turn or something like that. So previously, viewer passes, viewer passes plus souvenir tokens have been really good. But one thing to keep in mind here is that Previously, and this was in CSGO, you could buy an Antwerp 2022 viewer pass plus three souvenir tokens and actually still, it was very glitchy and very buggy, but you could still redeem those three souvenir tokens for souvenir packages. So uh, even especially as the old souvenir packages got more valuable, of course, the viewer pass plus the three souvenir tokens was going to go up in price because you could still redeem them. Uh, you know, there's videos of this out on YouTube, but I do believe, and I saw this at the release of CS2. I don't know if this is still true, but I saw at the release of CS2, they actually had removed this and it wasn't really even possible to redeem these old souvenir tokens anymore. So obviously that would take some value and hit away from the Paris uh, viewer pass plus souvenir token. So, you know, if I was going to do this method or if I wanted to stock up on some viewer passes or whatever, that would make me lean more towards just getting the viewer pass from uh, Copenhagen in itself and not the viewer pass plus three souvenir tokens because again once these souvenir tokens expire it seems like you won't be able to turn them in anymore but maybe you can still i don't know again at certain points in csgo you could i don't think you can do it anymore during cs2 but i also don't own any old souvenir tokens to be able to try this out um, obviously the souvenir tokens are supposed to expire and are not supposed to be redeemable um, but like i said it was glitchy it was buggy you could do it before but i don't think you can anymore so this definitely hurts these things as an investment um, you can see here again certain uh, majors had been really good so so if you think Copenhagen is potentially going to be underinvested, or especially because this method didn't work out as much uh, or as well in Paris, maybe less people are going to be doing it now. And in a weird way, if less people do it, and if less people think it's good, that could actually make it a better investment. So potentially you could buy a couple of extra Copenhagen viewer passes or a couple of extra Copenhagen viewer passes and three souvenir tokens and maybe make some money that way. Now, the other method to potentially trying to make money with souvenir tokens is by buying souvenir tokens themselves or buying this viewer pass plus three souvenir tokens because again those souvenir tokens are going to be three dollars and those are going to be redeemable for um, the souvenir packages and if you get the viewer pass plus three souvenir tokens you're going to get that um, for eighteen dollars and you're going to have the chance and opportunity to win extra souvenir tokens from the pick'em so again people who are going to be good at the pick'ems have a large knowledge of the esports scene um, and are probably going to get a little bit lucky too have an opportunity to make some money here because what we can see is that souvenir tokens or souvenir packages once they became tradable these things uh, we look at the overpass this thing at a certain point was going for as high as four dollars so again if you were buying souvenir tokens or the viewer pass plus uh, three souvenir tokens or whatever but even if you're just buying excess souvenir tokens again 20 100 whatever on multiple different accounts you could have been buying these souvenir tokens for three dollars and then selling them for four dollars now again you could have been making a dollar every time you had the opportunity to do that but again there was four dollars there was 365 there's 373 now you only have a very very short window to do this so if this is a method you want to do maybe the window's already passed maybe it's too late but you do have a small window where um everyone is trying to redeem those souvenir tokens uh and obviously it's going to take a little bit of time not everyone's going to have them right at the beginning so while the demand is really high and people want to do a bunch of unboxings and the supply is low you have a chance to make some money now you can see here this falls off a cliff very very fast this was May 23rd. So this was all the way still until, um, you know, while the major was going on, I believe the Paris major ended on May 21st. So all the way up until the end of the Paris major souvenir tokens uh, and souvenir packages were still profitable. So maybe you actually have more time than I thought. I thought this would have fallen off faster. But um, yeah, you do have a chance to be redeeming, redeeming souvenir tokens for souvenir packages, selling them off and making a small amount of profit. Because again, there's going to be steam fees and stuff like that in there, depending if you sell it on a third party marketplace or whatever. Um, but you, there, there was chances to make money by doing this. Um, just getting those souvenir tokens and everything like that. Of course, some of the other ways to make money are going to be from uh, potentially opening up um, capsules. Obviously, we know that Paris capsules have not done very well in the long run. But when Paris capsules or, or when Copenhagen capsules are going to go from a dollar to 25 cents once that sale starts, you have a small window. And we saw this with Paris where opening Paris capsules was literally profitable. There were certain times where Paris capsules had like an 80, 90, 100 percent plus return um, because sticker prices were so high. And then capsule prices dropped so low that you could literally open up Paris capsules and have an expected return that was going to be plus EV. That doesn't mean you're guaranteed to make money every single time you open up a capsule, but it means mathematically 
in theory, if you open up enough capsules over time, you were going to make a profit. So um, keep an eye out for stuff like that. As soon as the sticker capsule um, sale starts, you have an opportunity while sticker prices are still high to potentially um, have some profitable capsule openings. Um, obviously, there is going to be people who just straight up invest in the sticker capsules. Don't do this until after the sticker sale starts. Again, eventually the capsules are going to be sold for 25 cents and you'll be able to get them for even less than 25 cents on third party marketplaces. Um, people also are just going to invest in the stickers whether it be hollows or glitters or golds or whatever. Again, I would wait to do this. We've seen that Paris prices have just continually gone down over time. You are not in a hurry. You are not in a rush. You do not need to buy your stickers or your capsules or anything right away. I wouldn't recommend buy buying them during the major or anything like that but those are another opportunity for people to make money. So the main ways that people are gonna make money or attempt to make money, or it's possible to make money during the Copenhagen major are from flipping stickers during the actual tournament, um, trying to do something with souvenir packages, whether it's you know uh, buying souvenir tokens or um, getting souvenir tokens from the pick them or whatever. If you pick the right things, um, you can potentially flip those for money. Now again, I would sell those quickly because in the long run, souvenir packages haven't really turned out to be that great of investments. Um, maybe you can predict which souvenir package or, or which map is gonna be removed from the active duty map pool next. That souvenir package will probably perform well over time, but again, that's pretty gambly, that's pretty risky, it's pretty volatile, and who knows what map's gonna be removed next? Nobody knows for sure. Um, and then you obviously have ways of investing with the viewer passes, with stickers, capsules, all that good stuff. Um, but obviously we saw with Paris that many of those ways and many of those methods were not successful, but if less people are gonna be doing these methods this time because they weren't successful for Paris, again, in a weird way that could make them um, more probable of being successful with Copenhagen, if that makes sense in a weird way. But that is pretty much it for this video today, guys. Hopefully I catch you in the next one. Until then, peace.